Hi, I'm Annie Botticelli, and this is the Storyteller Forecast for Gemini for June 2017. Go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, see what's new on my blog, and if you would love to learn astrology, to either do it professionally or for your own purposes, or you'd love to be a coach as your profession and have an online business where you have a strong internet presence sharing your gifts, I can help you. So check out my upcoming courses. We'll be enrolling soon. So what's going on in the month of June? This is my most favorite month of the whole year. For many reasons, there are energies that are just screaming full speed ahead. It is the first of only two months this whole year where we don't have any personal planets retrograde, nor do we have any of their shadow periods. So just June and October for that energy, you know, May is great because it started to move this momentum into the focus, um, but we did still have those hangovers from the um, Mercury and Venus retrograde to contend with. So towards the end of May and into most of June, we just have the green light to blaze forward in huge ways. If you've been waiting to bring things out into the world, this is your time. I'm going to go into more details about dates that I love for different things um, soon. But before that, I want to talk about some um, general things, I mean, some things specific for Gemini. And actually, just to understand why June is so important for your launches and bringing things out into the world. We've got June, we've got some little parts of July, we've got some time in the fall, we've got a little bit of a pocket in January and maybe a little bit into February in 2018, and then the rest of 2018 is one big personal planet retrograde. We've got multiple Mercury retrogrades, a Mars retrograde, and a Venus retrograde in 2018. So we've got a couple of striking points here for bringing things out in a big way. And then the retrogrades bring us this time for business as usual or trying things on in a small way or working behind the scenes. But if you're working on bringing some big things out, making some big decisions, you've got to work with these active open periods um, because we're not going to have a whole lot of them over the next year and a half. And this June is one of the best times because First of all, specifically for Gemini, we've got a lot of energy in Gemini. We also have a lot of energy in Aries with Venus being there and being direct, which is crazy supportive. Oh, plus Jupiter and Libra, which is an air sign, which is all crazy supportive to Gemini energy. So you really want to maximize this month. Okay, so I've gone into a lot of detail, which I'm about to get into for this specific transits. But now I want to talk about Jupiter going direct on June 9th what that looks like specifically for Gemini. So for everybody, Jupiter is going direct in the sign of Libra. So coherence, expansion, improvements in relationship are part of the tagline of that transit for everyone. But specifically for Gemini's, you early and middle degree placements, you've got Jupiter waking up in your fifth house. And then you've got for your later degree placements, you have Jupiter waking up in your fourth house. So if you are watching for your rising sign, zero to 19 degrees, that's our early and middle degree placements. So you've got this fifth house focus and then 20 to 29 degrees, your late degree placements have the fourth house focus. So you'll get more into those details. I just wanna help you position where you're at. If you're watching for your sun sign, the first 20 days of the sign, you are early and middle degree placements. For the um, last uh, third of the sign, for your sun sign, um, that is the late degree placement. Okay, so now early and middle degree placements have Jupiter awakening after a four month slumber working on the internal scenes in your fifth house. When Jupiter moves through the fifth house, it is believed by many astrologers that this is one of the best times to find your true love and to improve your romantic life. So if you're looking for that someone, if you've been wanting to get online for dating, you know, we've been saying don't do that during the retrogrades because if you meet someone, there are caveats to it, you know, there some exceptions, but for the most part, when you meet someone that you want to start a new clean slate with, you want this kind of new energy. June is the best month in my mind for you getting on an online or, or other dating service, having a friend connect you with someone because the energy is all new and clear of the personal planet retrogrades. And now as of June 9th, Jupiter support is there too. If you're already attached, you can experience amazing forward movement with your partner, both from the, the Jupiter and Libra standpoint, expanding your relationship and also expanding your romance, your fun. I'm calling the theme of this month, um, for most of you, fun and frolic. 
That's the early and middle degree placements because Jupiter is enhancing this fifth house, which is the house of fun. It's the house of love. It's the house of hobbies. It's the house of children. If you're trying to have children, this is a wonderful transit. Jupiter in the fifth house is going to bring a lot of pregnancies and babies coming out or adoptions for many people. This is a, one of the best transits for increasing your, your child count and for improving the relationships that you already have with your current children. This is also great for taking on hobbies, taking classes, just because it's something you enjoy. The theme of this month is like doing what you want to do, expressing yourself in whatever ways, having fun. You know, if you're bound to a lot of duties or obligations or have gotten into kind of a mundane experience, this is the time to like start to get this, this fun and frolic and this expansion and these hobbies and this romance kicking up. So some things that I see um, working really well at this time is taking a dream vacation or crossing other things off your bucket list. I also like this for expanding fun, not only in this time, but planting seeds to make fun is more of a habit. Now remember you late to replacements, even if this isn't current for you at this time, it is coming for you. So take, take a mental note of these things. You can also check out and keep an eye on my blog um, called Jupiter Through the Signs and Houses. If you go to AnnieHelpsYou.com, you click on blog, click on astrology, then do a search for Jupiter on the search panel on the side. You can read more about Jupiter in Libra. That will be for everyone. You can read more about Jupiter in the fifth house, which is current for early and middle and will be current more for you later soon. You, for your late degree placements, you can read about Jupiter in the fourth house um, to get a better idea of more details of these things that Jupiter can bring that it's working on this year. Okay, so um, luck with fertility, conception, pregnancy, childbirth, child rearing, healing issues with your kids, um, romance, all of these kind of things, creative projects, um, art projects, thespians, you know, any acting, um, modeling, um, anything having to do with directing, um, athleticism, all of that is tremendously improved and increased and enhanced by Jupiter's transit through the fifth house. Okay, so now you lead to replacements. Um, Jupiter moving through the fourth house wants to expand your home and family. You can see a theme here with having children because your home count will go up when you have a child, right? And your home, your family will grow. So there's very strong energy for early, middle, and late degree placements of Gemini of having your home be expanded with children. And some of you may have experienced this already because Jupiter started the transit through the fifth house for many of you at the end of last year. And then it went direct and then it went retrograde, right? And then now it's kind of going back again. So you're, you're already kind of seeing where some of this energy is going. And now that it's waking up, it's just kind of back to task, you know. Um, in retrograde, it was, was working at a lot of weak links for the expansion, kind of like solidifying. You know, when you, when you watch a, a, a building be built, it takes a tremendous amount of time for them to work on the foundation. And you're like, God, are they still working on that? What are they doing? But then as soon as they're done with that, it's like the building goes up no matter how tall it is, really quick, like, whoa, that was fast. And that's what Jupiter does in retrograde. It works on these weak links that, that will wanna support your skyscraper of an experience. And so that's what it's doing, you know? And, and even in direct um, movement, sometimes it exacerbates a weak link so that you can strengthen it so that you can build higher. Jupiter is about building higher, bigger, better. Okay, so Jupiter in the fourth house for your late degree placements wants to improve your home experience. It wants to improve your experience with your family, your blood family, your home, you know, the, um, your family of origin and the ones you've created, that you've married into, etc. cetera. Um, also wants to ex ex improve your home. So home expansion, home improvement, selling real estate, buying a home. Um, you know, finding more freedom at home, finding more freedom where you live, the relative experience of expansion in your home. We always have to remember that Jupiter wants to bring freedom wherever it's at. So whatever, but it's a subjective experience of freedom. Not everyone experiences freedom in the same way. So some people with Jupiter in the fourth, moving with Jupiter in the fourth house, will move to a bigger house because that's more expanded for them. Some people will downsize so that they're not married to the mortgage and the upkeep of a bigger house. And a smaller house is actually expansion for them. 
You know, some people will be expanded by moving to a city because of all the options there. Some people will be expanded by moving out to where there are less people because that's expansive to them. So that's what Jupiter wants to do is just expand your relationships with your family. A tremendous healing can happen from your childhood in this period of time. Um, it wants to up your family count. You might have a roommate move in. You know, um, you might have your home improve or get bigger or your family size or home size or like the count of people that live in your house. You know, an in-law could move in. Just basically expands the energy of home and family. So these are the things. Um, oh yeah, and also it, it, it increases this maternal energy, whatever that winds up looking like. So these are the things most in my mind for Gemini energy in general. Now I want to talk about um, all of these wonderful dates in June, why they're great, what you can do with them, and when the mood starts to change towards the end of the month. Um, also, we didn't talk about birthdays. Really quick before I go into the details of the, of the transits ahead, happy birthday! So if you haven't already checked out my making wishes come true video um, that you can use for your birth to help understand and utilize your birthday wishes, then definitely do that. When the sun is um, at the same point that it was at when you were born, which is your solar return, you have this amazing opening of um, a portal for your desires because the sun represents what you desire. And when the sun gets back to the same place it was when you were born, this portal for desires, your manifest manifesting your desires opens up. So you definitely want to use your 10 birthday wishes um, and do a search if you just put in making wishes come true Annie um, and any search it should pull up my video that helps you get into more detail about how you use your birthday wishes and other astrological power periods. Okay so happy birthday and now we can talk about the details of the transits ahead and how to best use them. So I'm calling the theme of the month for the general transits for June for all signs full speed ahead. This is definitely one of my favorite months of the whole year. It is one of the months that carries with it the most momentum and forward moving energy that is more supported by positive aspects. This is one of two months um, in the whole year of 2017, June and October, that is completely free from personal planet retrogrades and their shadow periods. May introduced us into this period of movement um, because we had been in just kind of retrograde inner movement mode um, from the end of 2016 through uh, well into May. Um, so you started to see things moving and progressing and bursting out into the world in May and now June carries that forward in a big way. And although July will also have until um, around the 24th or so some, some clear energy and great transits for moving forward, towards the end of June we start to get a little dicey where those challenging aspects are a little bit more closely matched up with the positive aspects that make it kind of like touch and go. But for the first over three weeks, um, really until like the 24th of June, we just have amazing aspects and um, complete clear energy to sail. So I'm going to go into some of the aspects and the dates that I really like um, and the ones that I see some potential challenges, just all the things to take note of. And know that you can go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, and sign up for my free email newsletter. And in that newsletter, I do a write-up, so a written summary of the um, aspects and dates ahead, and I send that out a month early. So if you're a visual person and you want to keep better track of some of the things that I report in this part of the video, then you can sign up for the free email newsletter, and um, you can get it that way too. So the first of the month is one of my favorite days for locking in something long term. If you have been watching my videos for a while, or at least since the end of 2016, then you know I have been kind of coaching you along. Okay, we don't have a, a lot of great movement for pushing things forward. We had a little bit at the beginning of the year, but now is the time when if you have a launch, if you have a big commitment, if you have a big decision, um, that we've got some really great energy. And June 1st is the first aspect that I love. So Venus in Aries is making a beautiful trying to Saturn and Sagittarius. So anything that you have to do for long term involving love, beauty, and money. I had a lot of people write to me from my Venus retrograde video that they were wanting to do some 
um, physical improvements um, and enhancements and the Venus retrograde time was not the time to do that. But if you're looking for times to do that, this is a much better time. Um, love commitments, big love decisions, money commitments, starting businesses, launching different aspects of your already established business. I love this date for this. Um, and May 31st is also amazing if you're watching this beforehand. So the 31st through the 1st, you've got a power lineup that's pretty free and clear from negative um, or challenging aspects. On June 3rd, we have Venus and Aries again conjunct Uranus. Now, whenever we have planets get together in a conjunction, that means they're right on top of each other. They're at the same degree in the same sign. There's always a potential for something challenging to happen that is not positive. Um, but there's so much good energy sandwiched around it, it makes the odds greater that it will be a positive outcome. And if it isn't, there's support that can buoy you in whatever the negative or challenging thing may be. So Venus rules money and love and beauty and Uranus rules surprises and insights. So um, most people will experience happy surprises and just great brilliant ideas from this, but there could be a jostling piece of money news or um, love news that comes in that isn't positive as well because you know we just never know how these things are going to manifest. On June 3rd as well, the Sun in Gemini makes a beautiful trine to Jupiter in Libra. Trines are the best aspects, the most positive, easy. I don't want to say the best aspects because it depends on what you're judging by the best. I think that challenging angles are the best too because they provide impetus and energy to push through challenges. But we'll call it more favorable and easy and flowing and coherent. So the Sun in Gemini is making this coherent aspect with Jupiter in Libra, and that is bringing great support for your individual expression from your relationship space and also having your individual expression boost your relationships, you know, and helping people that you're in relationship with. So it could, the energy could flow both ways where you're helping someone you're, you're in relationship with or they're helping you. On June 4th, Venus in Aries is also making a trine, a beautiful aspect to the transiting North Node in Leo. So we talked a little bit about the um, transiting North Node in recent months. And this is a place where there is a key or keys held to your highest expression. So when you have Venus ruling this love and beauty and money and art and just aesthetics and you know beautiful energy, in this beautiful aspect with your highest expression, many a person is going to stumble upon a key or a piece that will, or a step that will facilitate their higher expression. Um, on June 4th, there's also a challenging aspect with the Sun in Gemini and making a square to Neptune in Pisces. How I'm reading this is, you know, Pisces can always bring confusion or doubt or self, self or doubt in general. Um, and the fact that the sun is an aspect to it, it can bring this self-doubt. So I always see, when I, for myself and for people that I'm working with, that whenever we have this boost of positive energy where we're pushing forward and we're feeling really positive about what we're doing, the shadow side comes in and the fears come up. Like, okay, you're putting yourself out in the world in this bigger way and then some fears come in. And this is kind of like that. We have a couple of points this month where there's like this big push of energy forward and then there's the second guessing energy. So this energy has the second guessing energy where you're you're questioning what you're doing and what you're putting out there. And, um, you know, but I say just push right through it. You know, if there's something usable in there with um, a reflection that comes back to you, then use it. And if not, then just ignore it and move on. On June 9th, we have the full moon in Sagittarius. It's also aspecting Saturn. And so when Saturn is um, nearby, it can bring a reality check, you know, like a, a sobering look at something. And the full moon tends to bring emotional things. Um, so there could be a sobering realization about something. But it's equally as likely that Saturn can work as a stable, wise helper in the fulfillment or the fruition or the coming to completion uh, or manifestation of this energy of Sagittarius. So whenever we have a full moon, we look to the sign that it's, it's in to see the energy of the fullness. So Sagittarius represents writing, teaching, learning, publishing, um, spiritual studies of any kind, religious or, you know, things that tie in all religions or no religions. Um, anything that, that 
works with a creative solution, kind of looking from the standpoint of being on a mountain down at the bigger picture. So many people will have a trip that they're going to take that comes to fulfillment. Many people will publish a book, will publish blogs, will start a blog, will have um, some speaking engagement of note, you know, something coming to fruition in Sagittarius. And it could be that this is solidifying a long-term trend for the future. And that's a way that Saturn can be helpful here. Saturn's been moving through Sagittarius and sort of taking these energies of the big dreams that are up here and, and forcing you to do the work to bring them down into fruition. And so I see this as hard work manifested in um, a wonderful result with Sagittarius-based uh, things. So also on the 9th, there is an aspect with Venus in Taurus and Mars in Cancer. And this is wonderful for heart to hearts. You know, the energy of Mars in Cancer is a little bit awkward because Mars generally rules, you know, Aries and is a co-ruler of Scorpio. And there's sort of this intensity and it's, you know, and Aries energy is, you know, very physical. It's not very emotional. Um, so in this energy of Cancer, you know, it's a little bit awkward, but in this beautiful angle with Venus, it's like a really beautiful coming together um, with Venus and Mars, which of course is the female and male aspects of ourselves, the active and passive aspects. So I love that date. Another beautiful day this month is June 13th, and that's when Mercury and Gemini will make a trine with Jupiter and Libra. This is a writer's delight or an expressor's delight, a communicator's delight. Um, editing is very strongly featured when we're talking about Gemini energy uh, or Mercury energy too. So um, again, I love this for book launches, for blog launches, for something big where you're teaching or learning or helping people. Um, the energy, since it's excessive, Jupiter can always be a little excessive, you know? So even at a nice angle, you could be driven to exhaustion, but this is, fine because we've been waiting to push out these things into the world for so long that if you're a little bit tired from the process of doing it, I think that's fine, you know? And I also see this follow-up energy on June 15th with the Sun and Gemini opposing Saturn as kind of another little like fear bobble that I talked about before. You know, there's all this energy just pushing open and out and it's so supportive and so wonderful. And we've got just these little kind of touching in points where we're like questioning, we're doubting, there's a little bit of a halt in activity, we kind of have to, you know, pull back the reins a little bit. So um, that's going on on June 15th. And always remember that when I give you these dates, you can feel these aspects before or after the actual dates. So don't hang your hat too heavily on the actual date because if you're paying attention, you'll feel the energy sometimes sooner or sometimes after the fact. So on June 16th, Neptune in Pisces goes retrograde. I see Neptune in Pisces um, as, well, Neptune in Pisces going retrograde as this amazing time to be okay with being reclusive. I think people need way more alone time than they get. Um, and for the people who are having too much alone time, perhaps it's not being productive. And Neptune in Pisces in retrograde can really facilitate that, you know? So just asking for more alone time, even if it's just 10 minutes in the day to be in your own energy field. People definitely strongly underestimate the importance of having just your own energy field around you sometimes. <clears throat> and this Neptune in Pisces transit it's really amazing for getting back in touch with what it feels like in your energy field. Um, you know, draining it out, clearing it out, and seeing what it feels like in there, and getting more familiar with what your energy is when it's not mixed with all the other people that you are, um, you know, brushing up against, your fields brushing up against throughout the day. Um, yes, let's see. Okay, so June 18th, we have another beautiful aspect with the Sun in Gemini making a, a sextile, which is a favorable angle, to Uranus and Aries. Whenever we have this 60 degree angle, it wants some action. You know, trines are energies that tend to just bring things, whether you do anything with them or not. And these, um, these sextile energies are things that they really want you to take action on. So like an opportunity is presented, but you have to do something with it, or you have two potentials sitting together and then you have to, to, to activate them. I always um, think about these, um, these angles 
as having ingredients on your counter in your kitchen, you know, for whatever it is that you want to make, cookies or whatever. And so it's like you have everything there you need to make the cookies, but you have to actually mix them together and bake them and to make them. So as you have opportunities that come to you, we are just leaving a time where it was sort of time to mull over those opportunities or to take small steps or intuitively based steps and not just go blasting forward for the sake of it. Um, but this type of energy, and we've got another one coming up, which I'm about to mention, is sort of this time to like take action and activate. On June 18th as well, we have Mercury and Gemini opposing Saturn and Sagittarius. So this is another little bit of a, um, it could be a fear bobble, or it could be a, just like a break point, you know? When Saturn opposes Mercury, there's some sort of a person being stern, an authority figure putting the clamps on your expression. You know, um, when we're not regulating ourselves, something steps in from outside in this, in this um, you know, we're in this reflective experience in the universe, this holographic experience. So if we can't control or manage or regulate ourselves, often something comes from outside to do that. So as we live in sync with the aspects in astrology that are occurring and with other synchronicities in our lives, it makes it more clear when something is kind of nudging us to back off a little bit, you know? So this, this is a full speed ahead of month. We've got a couple of touching points where it's like, you have to manage your horsey so that it doesn't get out of control and you don't go too fast and fall over. So I see this as another point here around the 18th. Um, and also, you know, just to kind of check in with you and your and your purpose and your intuition, because sometimes someone says something from outside of us that can can serve to damper our energy about something we're doing. But um, if there if it's not true for us, then you can just keep moving on. And if you are sensitive to it, then that shows you that you have a little bit more inner work to do, because it's still bothering you what other people think in a way that might be interfering with what you're supposed to be doing. So on June 20, 20th, Mercury and Gemini makes um, a sextile to Uranus and Aries. We talked about the sun making the same aspect a couple of days before, um, and now we have Mercury doing the same thing. So your expression is given a major boost, a major insight, you know, some brilliant um, energy comes in to support you. This is a really amazing energy. Um, but again, you might have to do something with it. There's like a potential sitting there and you have to activate it. On the 21st, and, and now we're starting to kind of move into this, um, this energy of emotion. A sub theme for this month that I was calling emo motion and emotion because the Gemini energy is all about movement, you know? And then as we get towards the end of the month, the cancer energies become very prominent and that's about emotion. So it's, you know, the movement and, and, and motion and then now we're moving into to a more introspective energy. So here on June 21st, we have the sun and cancer making a conjunction to Mercury. And it, the emotions are going to run high for better or worse. You know, it's a wonderful time for feeling, for journaling, for connecting, for being cozy in your home, for, you know, nestling into, um, companionship with someone that's close to you. On the 23rd, we have the new moon at almost three degrees of Cancer. So there's this energy opening up around home and family. We do have a couple of challenging aspects with that new moon, um, with Saturn and Chiron that could bring up old wounds. But we also have a really nice energy with Uranus, which could bring sudden insights that help you to view those wounds in a different way. It's really amazing how perspective can change everything and that you can look back at an event or at a present event with certain eyes and then if something happens and you shift how you're looking at it that it can look radically different so this is a theme that's beginning at the end of june and moving into july where we're kind of feeling into how we're looking at our lives through the emotional lenses so on June 24th, we have a beautiful aspect with Venus and Taurus and Pluto and Capricorn. I see this as the power of unseen forces or people in powerful positions, um, companies in powerful positions, anything that's like a lesser seen or harder to, to pin down, energy supporting your money, your love, your artistic expression. 
And this is really the last aspect of the month that I really love for trying to, to do much with because even though we have a couple of aspects between June 25th and the 29th that have some sweetness to them, they're really just alternating these Mercury and Mars and Cancer with these aspects with outer planets and also with each other that are just bringing a lot of up and down emotions. You know, the, the earlier part of the month is not very emotional. It's more action and it's thinking and planning and action oriented. And as we get towards the end of the month, there's just a lot of feeling going on. And that, like I said, that trend is going to continue into July. So my recommendation for the end of the month is, you know, to ground your emotions as much as possible. I always love bare feet and hands in the earth with that third eye up against a tree. You know, anything that drains your energy field, Epsom salt baths, EFT tapping, there are a million ways you can clear your energy field, but um, you're gonna need to do more of it, especially towards the end of the month. Um, so when the energy is flowing well, just keep rolling on. And then when you have some things that come up that cause you to really need to feel or you're confused, then just hold up. So that's gonna be a theme for the whole month. So definitely sign up for my free email newsletter to get a written version of these things and more. Um, I'm going to be launching my astrology apprenticeship program and my coach certification course in um, very soon, um, at some point either at the end of June or into July. And if you're watching this before that time, you can still go to my website and send me an email through my um, pages for these programs to get first dibs on these courses when they open up because they do fill quickly. And if I know beforehand that you're interested in them, then you'll get a pre-public chance at open slots before I make it, I open it up to the public. So if you wanna be a coach as your job, as your profession and learn how to bring that business online and have an internet presence, or if you wanna learn astrology, or if you wanna include astrology in your offering for your coaching, then I am your friend in this. This is my department. So check out my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com. Also see what's new on my blog. I hope you have a wonderful month and that you get lots of active um, productivity and just blasting forward into the direction of your dreams um, happening for you. And I'll see you next month. Bye.